Casey, we cut the chit chat a hole. This year, we're going to grab the bull by the balls and kick those punks off campus. Well, looks like the cows have come home to roost. Hello, welcome along to another edition of the Entertainment.ie Movie Show. I'm Mike Sheridan, and always I'm joined by Brian Lloyd and Dee Malumbi. Hello. Hello. Uh, this week we've got a very cool prize. We've got tickets to the Irish premiere of Daddy's Home 2. And it's not just any Irish premiere. Uh, the cast will be in attendance. So Mel Gibson, John Litko, Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell will be in attendance and you will get a chance to mingle with them. Uh, if you want to win, just comment below with the person you would like to come along. Uh, the film is on November 15th in the Odeon Point Square. So this week, lads, we're going to start off with a bit of a mental one. Yes. Um, <laughs> Putting it mildly. Uh, put it mildly yeah. and Dee you've got an interview with Barry Keoghan actually at the end we're going to play mm-hmm. it out for anybody who's listening to this yes. uh, we're going to play the interview to f- your interview in full with Barry Keoghan mm-hmm. at the end of it Killing of a Sacred Deer it's Colin Farrell Nicole Kidman uh, Barry Keoghan from the director of The Lobster um, This I don't want to see this <laughs> <laughs> I do not want to see this film Why? the trailer unsettles me the poster unsettles me just the vibe of the film just unsettles yeah. me it is unsettling not gonna lie yeah. it's like it's like full on repulsive at times like remember the very first shot is of like this open is it open heart surgery it, but you see inside someone and it's just like pumping blood and you're just like oh god and that's that's just one shot that's one of the there's, shots there's a lot of that is there there's not a lot but it kind of it kind of hits you all of a sudden and there are some like quite graphic bits like it's very very unsettling disturbing repulsive and yet you can't stop watching it there's something about it that's so enthralling that you can't take your eyes off the screen and, as like horrific as it can be and weirdly enough as well there are parts of it that are kind of like like the only way I can describe it is strangely funny yeah mm-hmm. like well, it's the lobster also kind of strangely humor, funny yeah. that's what I'm yeah. saying yeah yeah mm-hmm. it's very like the lobster in the sense that like it's it's weird It's no. it knows that it's being weird and if you can't get on board with the weirdness in the opening five minutes you may forget about it because it just gets deadly stranger mm-hmm. what's it time. about mm-hmm. so to give it like kind of as simple a summary of it as possible because you want to go in as blind as possible yeah. and really see it unravel is that um, Colin Farrell plays a surgeon who has this really weird relationship with a teenager who's played by Barry Keoghan and you don't know the exact nature of it but Barry Keoghan is kind of bringing him home to meet his mom and everything and Colin Farrell is bringing Barry Keoghan over to his house and Nicole Kidman's meeting, his wife yeah. yeah Nicole Kidman plays his wife and he has a daughter and son so it's kind of this really weird relationship and you're not so exact, sure exactly is what's going on appropriate on. isn't you have no yeah, idea yeah. and then um it takes a much darker turn and that's kind of that's probably about as much as you yeah, need to know yeah going yeah in. yeah so it's it's completely different in tone than brian from the lobster completely because the lobster kind of had a kind of a sweetness to it yeah this doesn't though i mean like this is there is no sweetness in this whatsoever there really isn't like and it's very i mean i, I even as d describes it there i mean when it takes that kind of second act turn and the whole kind of story is revealed, it's more closer to something like a horror film. I mean, uh, I would describe like it in terms a- of ten, like it's tense. It's, mm-hmm. it, it plays like a thriller. It plays like a thriller. It's very gory from what Dee is saying. Yeah, very very gory. But in the sense of, it's just it's a strange film. And I and I say this honestly. Like I was thinking about this film for weeks. At, for I saw it about like two weeks ago, mm-hmm. and like. I've thought about it. Or anytime I've seen a poster, I'm reminded of something in the film. It's just like, oh god, <laughs> like that. Like, oh shit, remember that? And it's just, it's, it really does. Like, it just gets under your skin. Like Barry Keoghan's performance in this it is incredible, and it's good that he's getting he's noticed a for because yeah, he, yeah, he's, he's a great much. actor. But in this, I mean, like people were 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 comparing him to Anthony Perkins in Psycho. Oh, and good. I think that's pretty apt. Yeah. It's kind of that unassuming yes. kind of mm-hmm. creepiness. Do we yeah. know yeah. something's not quite right? Is that it? Yeah, yeah, that kind of buzz. Yeah, that it's really sort of like he looks completely innocent on the outside, but when the kind of the the when the sort of impetus of the whole story is revealed, it's like wow, it's just completely yeah. not what you expected. Mm-hmm. But even even at the start of it, when you're introduced to the character, it's just like he's perfectly nice. He's perfectly. Uh, innocent but you just know there's something up you know yeah. that kind of way it just there's this, this aura of like menace or, and I'm like I've interviewed Barry Hogan yeah. you've interviewed him he's a very nice man like, yeah, he's, yeah. he's, he's bang match. on like he's yeah. grand like he's sound he's from Dublin Tree he's alright but one. or Dublin 1 rather sorry Dublin, Summer Hill Parade is Dublin no, Tree Dublin, Dublin 1 Dublin City Centre is Dublin 1 anyway go on anyway yeah okay. totally <laughs> <Don't argue laughs> over geography. yeah but like he's totally gr- like he looks completely <laughs> normal and even in real life he's completely fine but in this it's just it's a mark of a great actor that he completely he, he, disappears. He disappears into mm-hmm. it and is just this 
I just yeah, it's just yeah. it's really freaky. Finally, like, yeah. the performances: Colin Farrell, mm-hmm. Nicole Kidman, as well. Yeah. We talked about how good Barry Keoghan yeah. is. Uh, how, how are those two? If Colin Farrell's had this yeah. in crazy a crazy career resurgence yeah. in terms of oddball roles. I mean, for me, I wasn't as mad about Colin Farrell in this just because it basically felt like he was playing the exact same characters in The Lobster, just in a different type of environment and with a different job. It does kind of a Dougal so, vibe sometimes. Doesn't yeah, he? Like, oh, something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's weird. I mean, it works perfectly <laughs> for like Yorgos Lanthimos' universe. Like you can tell a Yorgos Lanthimos film now immediately. He's just kind How of developed his own and aesthetic. And exactly. So, you know, like fair play to the director that, you know, he's one of kind of these modern like auteurs, I suppose yeah. you could yeah. really call him at this point. Um, Nicole Kidman is really great in this as well I really liked her but for me the standout really was Barry Keoghan I mean you were talking we were talking about this before and Brian was even saying like there could be like Academy Award nods in there and at first I was like oh, I don't know if it'll go that far but the more I think about yeah. it the more I think how many great supporting actor Actors, yeah. performances have we actually seen yeah. this year and yeah. I mean he is an incredible it might have just this. come too soon in terms of getting the momentum and you know but the, the element have been incredible yeah. with films yeah. that they've had before I mean, and A24 the, is A24 yeah. having A24 are doing yeah. it they're, 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 they're always yeah, doing with they're, the Oscar they really know what they're doing with the Oscar stuff yeah. so we'll, we'll move on from there anyway um I don't. I still don't know where I want to go and see. It. That's what I'm saying. Like I, still it's haven't, I still haven't seen Thor. I might go and see Thor instead. Yeah, like you know, yeah. I just want to distract myself for a couple of hours. It needs to be in the right kind of frame of mind. Certainly not hungover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, didn't want, I didn't want to say it. Glad that you. Glad that you brought. Why do you want to say, Brian? Because you, you, you're you're rough. Like, am I rough? Am yeah, I? you're rough. I That's know you're rough. Absolute bullshit. That is. <laughs> you're not. Rough. Is, they, they, they're like, I don't know what you're talking about. You're yeah. rough. I can tell you're rough. Yeah. Like, we're, at the, <laughs> we're at the notorious premiere, and uh, and after we, well, should we might as well we might as well talk about that now. Yeah. And it's kind of interesting because. Because I know all these guys. Yeah, um, I was going to say, like, it's kind of a bit mad. You're, yeah, you're it's a bit, and, and I, like, so I don't, Look, I didn't know the filmmakers at all. I, right. I met them. Mm-hmm. They're lovely guys. Gavin, guy called Gavin Fitzgerald directed us. Uh, Jamie Dornan produced us. And uh, Graham McDowell runs a uh, runs Graham McDonald runs, runs a show. Hang on, so what? Well, Jamie Dornan. No, Jamie Dalton. Jamie Dalton. Jamie Dalton. I said Jamie, <laughs> Jamie Dornan. I was like. <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey. So we didn't know the guys, but they spent four and a half years putting this together. Yeah. Mm. And Gavin, in particular, I think, and Graham lived in McGregor's basement in the Mac Mansion. When anytime we go to Vegas, so anytime anything would happen, they'd run upstairs. So like when Josie Aldo pulled out of that fight, the guy like Gavin was upstairs with the camera, and Dana White, the UFC president, was coming to tell Connor. So to mm. get those moments on camera, um, so I didn't know those guys. I know like, like my coach Owen is in it. Um, I know John Cavan I've hosted a bunch of stuff with John Cavan yeah, yeah. mm-hmm. we've got an interview with them on the site uh, we'll play out a couple of minutes of the interview with Connor talking about David Beckham I think at the end of this um, so yeah I go, I'm going into it going please like this because this is going to be so awkward if I don't you know yeah. if it's bad it's really good it's bombastic right. it's not a retrospective you know let's look at the career let's analyse the career and, and kind of some people had said that it's more of a you know check this out check this journey out over the course of four mm-hmm. and a half years and what kind of what's still to come do you yeah. think though because I'll be honest with you now like I've no interest in UFC or MMA if I your brother int- does though right what your brother does I mean brother's mad yeah. for it oh yeah yeah but I'm saying if you have no interest for it could you go into this I think I don't think I think if you don't like Conor McGregor it's not going to change your mind on him sure I yeah. mean like I, I mean you have to have a huge amount of respect for his athletic ability sure and what he can do in the cage and that's what appeals to me more than anything yeah. else because I have an idea it's a very small idea about how he does what he does and how he does it he does it better than anybody Mm-hmm. So, the, and it's difficult to wrap your head around that and that kind of, you know, just pure, like he gets injured like six weeks out from uh, the Mendes fight that was supposed to be the Aldo fight and it's a really bad injury. Yeah. It's like a tear, 80% tear in his knee, uh, ACL Jeez. tear. Yeah, yeah. And you're not supposed to be able to stand and he fights and it goes into a lot of that stuff. So that's stuff that you don't see on YouTube and I think that's a problem or an issue that they may or may not have in getting mm-hmm. bums on seats. So I literally left the junkers I was speaking to Connor Owen and John mm. and, and Gavin and Jamie. I left the junker and I was walking in Gravity and there was posters everywhere yeah, and two yeah, lads yeah, yeah. bang on demo looked like they were kind of like 19, 20 and they were like it's just going to be YouTube clips. Now it's not. There is a lot more to it. Yeah. yeah. So it's just going to be interesting to see if those fans those people who we'll think turn they get, out yeah because yeah. He's, he's a millennial superstar he, <laughs> could, he documents everything he has a photographer that follows him around mm-hmm. he's a videographer all up for the Mac life he has all of this stuff mm. film yeah. so it's going to be interesting to see how it goes down I enjoyed it a lot I saw it for the second time at the premiere yeah um, right. and my friend with me loved it as well um, and you know what I'll say finally you, I've never seen a connection like that with, with, with people at a, at a movie premiere and it's different so probably knew a lot of people there I've mm-hmm. I've done a million of them I've been yeah, to a million of them oh, yeah. I've never seen anything like that before people mm-hmm. hung around yeah. outside and waited for after mm-hmm. the film yeah and so that, that kind of that, that, that kind of thing is absolutely insane so wherever it goes who knows there might be another documentary in a few years if you're a fan 
absolutely go and sure, see yeah. it. If you're not a fan, if you don't care, you don't like Connor, it it's yeah. not gonna it's not gonna turn you around on him. But like I said, I love the sport, so I enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> so I actually I spoke to him uh, the other day. The interview was flying. The full interview is up on on YouTube. We'll post the link below. Uh, it's it's doing really really well. But we'll take two minutes now and we'll show you. I chatted to Connor about David Beckham and, what, and how he's kind of handling fame basically. I know you were kind of at that level. You're probably, I would say, I said in a review to the film, you're probably where David Beckham was maybe 10, 15 years ago. You're that level of fame now. I right. know something you liked doing yeah. back in the day was you would just walk down Grafton Street, kind of window shop, yeah, maybe yeah, run and yeah. have a look oh, at the yeah, clothes. Yeah. Is that something that you missed, that anonymity you've been able to? I, I can't remember it. I cannot. I, 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 rem I remember when it first started happening. First, I'd be like, someone would suss me and say, can I have a picture? I'd be like, yeah, and i give them a picture, a face off, a sign, that fucking jocks. <laughs> i do the whole bleeding lot. And then as I start getting a million people start running to the, to, towards me, and then it start getting a little, a, li a little heavy. But I just, I cannot remember what it's like to roll down somewhere and not be, be, be noticed. So I just embrace it. As far as like walking down Grab Street, I still walk down Grab Street. I still roll around. So um, again, it's, it's something that I'm just blessed that you can, you see like people in the public eye they can be they can complain about it but I mean this is not that's not a real problem that you can't go yeah. somewhere and not be noticed there's people have real problems you don't the neck of some people to, to complain about something like that so I'm just I'm just grateful and blessed and and happy to be in the position I'm in da David Beckham you mentioned funny I was talking to David Beckham he, he messages me on Instagram every now and again he was at the ultimate fighting championship performance institute where I prepared for the Floyd fight and the ring was there, the, the ring that I trained in, and he put up a post and, and, and tagged me in it. And we were talking about it, and he was like, I mean, it makes me want to get into fighting. I was like, say no more, David, we can make that happen. You know we can make that happen if you want. So we had a little laugh about it. But D David Beckham is an OG, an OG of the whole, the whole picture, I suppose, from a fashion standpoint, which I've capitalized on and I'm continuing to capitalize on. And then obviously from a sporting standpoint, his was football, mine's fighting, but... David Beckham is an OG and I have much respect for him and, and the empire he has built for himself. That's doing well anyway. Yeah. Any, anything that you do with Conor McGregor just seems to blow up and get an insane amount of hits. What's so it on there? Like, you won't Tom believe what Conor McGregor... No, I'm only joking. No. What's it on there? Like a quarter of a million or uh, something? No, or? beats. I, 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 I have no idea. It's a lot more than that. Like, yeah. Um, anyway, that's yeah. on me. People yeah. were tuning in for me. <laughs> I'm interviewing Technique. That's what it was. <laughs> Finally, Brian. More yes. on the Orient Express. Um, <laughs> Ugh. Don't like, the, don't like the look there because this is right up these streets. It the, really is. Because it's, it's kind of old retro, school. Hollywood, yeah. classic stuff. You know, no, no, murder no, mystery. No, no, good. No, no, no. Okay. No, no, I mean, like, right. Okay. The problem that I had with this was that, you know, Kenneth Branagh, he is a very, very good director, I think. <laughs> I don't think he is. But I do think he his, has a style that is very hard to watch sometimes, that it's really, like, quite dramatic. Quite stoic as well. Yeah, yeah. Very dramatic and very over the top and very stately and very just. Ah! And for something like this, you would imagine somebody like, I don't know, and I know I keep bringing him up, but David Fincher or somebody like that would have been the right person to do this story because it requires you to be, you know, questioning everybody and like, okay, did he do it or did she do it? Or because obviously, I mean, like, it's the original sort of locked mystery mm -hmm. kind of thing. Like, it's 12 people on a train, one of them murdered another person who did it. But the way the kind of Kenneth Branagh kind of structures the whole thing is. is and I'm not giving this away because it's 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 in the trailer and it's in all the promotional stuff. Is that you think it's going to be it? It could potentially be any of them. Yeah, and it could have been. A, it could have been any of them. Sorry, but, like, but <laughs> and the whole way through the film, it doesn't make like it's just it's so stupid because like you're like <laughs> no really. I was watching. I was like, this is just dumb because he could have done it. He could have done it. He could have done. It, and it doesn't. Everybody has a motive. Exactly. Yeah. Every yeah everybody's a red herring. Like. like exactly and it's yeah that's what i'm saying like the red herring thing only works if you select one red herring and say it could possibly be him but there's evidence suggests it's him let's sorry sorry, is, sorry do you want but isn't that also kind of part of like the original who done it yeah yeah i yeah. know it's a who done it but like it's just the way that it's structured in the right. film is is that by the time the eventual reveal comes you're like that is just ridiculous our audience is just a bit more in tune with that type of stuff now than yeah, they were yeah, a bit more true. meta than, than when they were something for something as old school as that mm -hmm. as kind of fun as it might be what what's what's the cast like it's daisy Fine. ridley from star wars yeah daisy ridley this is, is her in first known star wars role, yeah. right yeah and she's pretty good in it yeah and you got olivia coleman she's awesome i love yeah. her she's brilliant she's uh, so funny like peep show brilliant uh judy dench is in it um josh gad is in it johnny depp is in it josh gad the penguin that's, that's not happened yet. Sorry, that hasn't happened yet. Is that what you didn't and like and I film? don't want to talk about that yet. <laughs> okay. Anyways. Sorry, Brian said he'd leave the country if Josh Gad... I said I would actually... No, what Josh I said Gad was... Becomes, um, 
becomes the penguin. What I said was, was I would quit my job as movies editor of entertainment that I if Josh Gad becomes a penguin. And I will do it. I will do it. I will quit and leave. What are you gonna industry. do? I'll just I don't care. I'll that's it. Like if he becomes the penguin, a vagrant. I'll just yeah, I'll be like <laughs> sit outside in the street. Yeah, I'll be like Kung Fu, I'll just wander from place to place, solving problems. Like David Banner at the end of the hook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So what you're saying, Brian, is it's crap. Yeah, oh yeah, it's muck. Yeah, it's, okay. it's just it's muck. That's uh, that's a damn shame. That's a shame. Yeah. Well, you, you, you're gonna go and see it anyway. So yeah. yes, yeah, yeah, I'm going to see it tonight. So hopefully, enjoy. It. I mean, I might like I am kind of an old school gal. Sure, yeah. but like you know, you know, old school gal or not, this is just crap. Like, <laughs> sorry, like I mean, like you can put that one okay. on the poster. <laughs> uh, don't forget to enter the competition below. Just tag who you would like to come along to the Daddy's Home Two premiere and meet the cast, mingle with the cast, and all that crap. Huge thank you to Charlotte Reed and Production, and we will see you next Friday.